WSOU 89.5 FM. I'm DJ Ben, and I'm here with Patrick from Fit for an Autopsy. How are you doing today? I'm doing really good, man. Thanks for having me. Thank you for doing this, man. So we're right outside Gramercy Theater, final stop of the tour. How's the tour been so far? Uh, it's been pretty incredible, man. There's been like 16 or 17 or so sellouts on the tour, and every show has been wild. Uh, we have a, a whole new crew and a whole bunch of people on the road with us. The bands have been great. Everybody's been great. So it's to come back from COVID and have that kind of a response, it's just been perfect. So it's, it's been really, really good. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of the sellouts, and I know even tonight was pretty close, if not a – I was kind of hoping by the time I got here. <laughs> it's close. I mean, <laughs> doors just open, and, you know, people are walking up and calling. I mean, since I've been here, there's been like – 10 or 15 people that have walked up, so who knows? We might catch a New York City sellout at the Gramercy, which would be a, an amazing thing, you know? Yeah. New record out now. Oh, what the future holds. Um, you know, ton of great, great press from it, and, you know, we're playing it a lot here at WSOU, and we're getting a lot of lot of positive feedback. Um, and this is even following up with I thought was a fantastic record with Sea of Tragic Beast. And it, it to me, it's just... It's taken a fantastic album and just even increasing it so. How was uh, some of the writing and stuff and recording during COVID especially? Well, I mean, we'll address each part of that yeah, question. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot, a lot of information. <laughs> um, no, it's okay. I actually like this kind of stuff. So, like, you, you always want to grow. Like, growth is the most important thing. If you're not growing as a musician, if you're not creating something new, you're stifling yourself, you're cheating the fans, you know. I, I understand the idea of wanting to make the same record because people like something and then you want to keep doing that, but also, you got to provide something new. I mean, you can eat pizza five times a week, but it's always got different toppings on it or something, you know what I mean? So it's the idea of like being able to recreate yourself in a way where you're not alienating the people that already like what you do, but you're also creating room for more people to enjoy it. And sometimes that can go, it can be disastrous doing that, but other times you kind of find your niche. And I feel like we've never been a band that sticks to one thing even from song to song on our records there's a different vibe you know when you go from you know uh far from him to higher level of hate to uh collateral damage to um you know two towers there's a different vibe in all those songs but they all still have the formula you know and that's the thing a lot of bands forget their formula so they were just trying to grow as a band and achieve the ability to expand what we do and expand in a way that is reasonable for who we are stick to our guns but still create something you know and art is supposed to expand it's never supposed to stay dull and it's something that we really stick to um as far as going from one album to the next the writing process is always the same with fit for an autopsy will putney is the brains behind the operation he writes the majority of everything you know we all have our input we all send riffs we do things but at the end of the day you know will's job is music it's his whole entire life you know when i go home from tour sure i have music but i also tattoo and i got a kid and a family and i got a million things that i have to do will wakes up in the morning records bands writes music he's constantly with his feet in the water so when you have somebody like that in a band who's so creative and so good it's almost impossible not to be consistent and not to be constantly pushing forward to do new music and do new records and have new things so the creative side of things is always moving forward with fit you know will and i are on the phone every day we talk about where we're going what we're writing how we're doing it and then you know the rest of us come in and we write solos we write leads we rewrite parts rearrange things so it's a collaboration but there's always will at the helm when it comes to the creative side of fit he's always been in the band and he's just the guy so I know that's a very long-winded answer <laughs> to a very long-winded question, but I think I think I covered all the bases. Yeah. Um, now, with this latest album, was that something you guys have been holding on to for a little bit? Because I know more earlier on in the pandemic, um, a lot of bands were holding on, holding on, waiting out, waiting out for it. And you know, But uh, was this something that, because it's also like, because it, I mean, it, came out late enough now where it's like it may not have been quite that it may have just been uh, it wasn't yeah. we wrote the record and recorded it during the pandemic we went through the painstaking task of finding ways to get everybody to the same place at the same time it was i mean they ran me through the ringer you know what i mean like they <laughs> they really pushed it to make it difficult but we we made it work we all got in the studio we did what we had to do um 
but I mean, we also released music that we were holding on to in the beginning of the pandemic. So yeah. uh, your next question is probably going to be, when did we decide it was time, right? Because that's, <laughs> that, that's that the pretty next, much that's was. A, a couple of months into the uh, pandemic, we released Fear Tomorrow. Yes. Um, and that was a song that we had written for a project that we were working on uh, much earlier in the, in maybe like almost a, a year. I think when we recorded Sea Tragic Beats, we may have recorded that song, just as like a B-side kind of thing that was mm. going to be used for something else. And it was so linked lyrically to what was going on in the world at the time. Mm. It was like, all right, we got to release this. So we released it in a hit. And when it hit, we were like, wait a minute. We need to take advantage of this because people are listening more than ever right now. And if you put out something that's good and tangible and people want it, it's going to do well. So in the process of doing that, we started getting all this attention. And the next thing we knew, all of our records recouped. Everything happened. Everybody was listening at that particular time. So it was like, now. Now's the time. Strike while it's hot. So we went to Philly and we did two videos for two singles that we have and when the record was all ready we did a nice long setup i think it was like a five month long setup and then we dropped the record and to be completely honest with you it's been incredible you know the amount of response the amount of records that moved the first week just everything that's happened i mean other bands coming to see us play people paying attention our videos getting all this airplay and like songs getting airplay on the radio and it's been a much not to say that our other stuff hasn't been received well because it always has but this has been a different thing and people are paying attention different. I really believe that a lot of bands are benefiting from boredom because I believe that if you fall into a certain genre or you sound like a certain thing, people won't listen to you. But when people got nothing to do, mm -hmm. they pay attention to everything, <laughs> right? Yeah. So we got lucky. And a handful of people like Matt from Trivium, you know, Gary Holt made a big post about our last record before this one dropped. And, um, Machine Head, Rob Flynn from Machine Head, he was pushing our stuff, and like people just paid attention, and it's been perfect, you know. And we owe Matt, Gary, you know, uh, uh, Rob from Machine Head. Um, I mean, there's a list of people. Uh, Marshy from The Artist Murder. Like all these bands have always really helped us, but on this record, it seems like all of that really did more than we can ever explain. And uh, we're real lucky. We're real lucky to have those people on our side. And, you know, thank you to everybody that even just gave a listen. It's it's pretty incredible. Yeah, because I, I even, my first of hearing you guys was seeing a post. It was, I guess, short, really shortly after Sea of Tragic Beast came out from Matt Heafy of Trivium. It, it, was, it was one of those things I'm like, okay, like let me take a listen. And then I've just been hooked ever since. I mean, it's just been nothing but fantastic music and that also got me diving deeper into your catalog too and sure, sure. and all that as well doing the music nerd thing i mean <laughs> i mean matt i mean the reason that i personally believe that the reason that ralph flynn and gary holt and like all these different people and i keep saying these names i'm not trying to toss them in the fire but these are just people that have helped us mm -hmm. but i mean matt heathy is the reason that those guys know about us <laughs> like because he's he stands in front of us every day every time and always takes our back and always pushes it so we're really blessed in that that way to like have people that are willing to take you know a smaller band and shine some light on them you know that's a really important thing to have like you know the big brother kind of aspect or the, the friend that helps you and I think a big problem in our industry is that a lot of people don't do the right thing with that kind of luck because it is luck you yeah. know just to have somebody you know that's in a legacy band go wow this is great and then want to push you so to all of those people that have done that like thank you so much for that and and it's it's huge so and uh this is now the second album released through uh nuclear blast records yeah. and uh how has it been since you guys hopped on i, I was you guys hopped on your first release was see tragic, tragic beast, beast and that's uh, you know when everything blew up and uh, how has it been uh i mean was, terrible how has it been with, with, with working with them and all that i mean terrible and incredible and, and <laughs> terrible in the idea of like we put out this banger of a record and had all the support from the label that you could ever ask for and then the universe was like no you're gonna stay home so that was terrible but the label monty and his whole team are incredible there's no pressure to do anything that we don't want to do they're willing to help us in any way they can if we want to go further and go deeper they're always there to take our backs and you know now that the records are doing well it's even better but since day one those guys have been on our side and like really willing to work with us and 
you know, the labels want to make money. That's it's just it's it is what yeah. it is. Like, you know, nothing is free. Everything comes with a price. But the fact is, is that Nuclear Blast took us and put us in a position where we could grow, and we we owe their whole team. You know, from marketing all the way down to the people that we deal with every day with PR stuff and like all the stuff we do every day. It's been absolutely incredible. So we're we're very lucky. You play Jackson guitars, right? I do play Jackson. Yeah. Uh, I recently signed on with them, and uh, right now I'm touring with um, the Dave Davidson Pro Model Warriors, and um, their stuff is incredible. I'm really, really excited. Some really cool stuff going on in the background with them, and like their whole team's super supportive. Um, we are, and we're actually using uh, EDH stuff too, which mm -hmm. you know is associated with the Jackson line now, and. Um, we, you know, we're playing the new 5150 Iconics. So those things are really, really great. Jackson's great. Like, if you're going to be in, in a metal band, there's very few companies I think that carry, you know, real metal guitar players the way yeah. that Jackson does. So it's pretty lucky to be there, and they've been also extremely helpful. Like, no problems getting gear. Like, an incredible team. So that's we want. You know, thank you to Jackson <laughs> for taking good care of us for sure. Yeah, I've always been been a fan of Jackson guitars. They've always had my eye. And uh, yeah. remember, even in high school, a friend of mine had one. And every time I was at his house, I'm like, oh, I'll pick this up and just kind of yeah. mess around a little bit. And the pointier, the better. <laughs> exactly. You know I mean? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Patrick, for uh, being with me today to do this interview. I really appreciate it. Uh, well, we appreciate you guys, and SOU has always been there for us. We've always, you know, been lucky enough to have you guys push the stuff. So, you know, to everybody at the radio station that's ever taken care of us, thank you very much. Um, to everybody who's bought the record, given us a listen, taken a minute to check out the shows, supported us in any way. You know, we want to thank you, all the bands we've ever toured with, everybody that's ever helped us. Like, it's been a pretty incredible tour, and it's good to be back. And, you know, hopefully we get to see, you know, everybody on tour and, and do the whole thing. So, you know, thank you for having me, and you know, we'll talk soon.